Hello everyone, my name is Tim. My name is Mohammed. And today we're here to talk about change. Change in what? It looks like the refrigerator. I don't have any change on me, so it's oh. kind of like refrigerant here. I can use some change to come up with some. I find some, I'll let you know. So we got our old standard R22, one thirty four eight simple compound refrigerants, and then we have these blends here. Yeah, so we have the blended refrigerants of 410A to 404, etc. Now we're going to have to deal with them because the government says we must. Yeah. Because of changing times, we must change with them. And with that change comes more work for us, right? Yeah. Now we got to do more. So let's talk about what that change includes. What the heck? What, so what are you supposed to bubble with? Uh, I see bubbles here, pulling bubbles, so it's got to do something with like a boiling of water. Mm -hmm. Something, huh? Right? And do? Do. I'm not looking at this do form on this plant here, so I guess it's got to do with something, you know, do. Maybe, maybe, or not do. No, do. do so or not do. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's getting rid of the do or making do. Yeah. Here's making bubbles or the bubbles have gone away. <laughs> sad, sad bubbles have gone away. But uh, so let's kind of keep this in, in perspective. Okay. So tell me about dew point. Well, it looks like dew point is the uh, temperature with super heat. Ooh. So when I think about dew point, I'm no longer thinking about on a single component refrigerant where I go above saturation. Right. I'm talking about what happens when I go above my dew point. Yeah. Okay? And then I become super heat. Super. And what about this bubble point then? Well, it looks like bubble point is the opposite of what the dew point. Does. Ooh. It's below. So if I go below, right. <laughs> I really look up to you, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if I go below this bubble point, I now become subcooling. Just like before when I did saturation, when I went below saturation, I had subcooling, right? right? This is making sense. Yeah. This is it's just we have some new terms. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I'm 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 kind of good with this. Yeah. Uh oh. More, More definitions. Uh oh. So it has this thing called glide. Okay. I'm gliding along, okay? No, I don't think it's the same glide. No. But the refrigerants are separating from each other, right? Yeah. So, and this glide is that temperature range between the different the refrigerants, okay? Yeah. Or the pressure range, depending on what chart we use, right? Now, what's this fractionization? This is the actual separation during the, okay, so. Yeah, we had joy, we had fun, but now get out of here. Yeah. Okay, I'm we'll come back later, yeah. right? So this is a term that's just kind of complements glide. It says that, yeah, they're, they're physically separating from each other. So I really have to worry about this because now, because they will separate, um, I now need to charge these as a liquid, right? Right. Now, on my standard good guys over here, we'll call them good, they're bad. They're bad. Okay. Um, I could charge as a liquid or vapor, it didn't really matter because it was a single blend. Now this one, I need to kind of make sure that I I charge this a liquid to make sure it all gets in there, right? Yeah, these are a little more complicated. So. Okay, yeah. so we're going to charge this a liquid. And we're going to have to worry a little bit about making one refrigerator not more than another. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, some examples. These aren't too bad. No. Well, they have, you know, 404 has approximately 1.5 degrees or less glide. Mm -hmm. You know, 410A is, is less than 5.5 or half degree. Not too bad. No. Now when I get into something like this. Oh, those so, are a bigger difference. Yeah, start mixing more and more refrigerants together, the glide kind of starts going up, and it causes me some more concern. Yeah. So, it's still I have to think about this in a logical sense, that this is just something I have to deal with. So this is something I'm really going to have to pay attention to now. Oh, absolutely. And we're going to have to pay attention to our pressure temperature charts because we're no longer a single pressure for a single temperature and vice versa. Right. <gasps> so, if I look over here, I got R22, my standard. If I'm looking at, let's say, 80 degrees, I know that I'm about 144 pounds. Okay? However, if I look at 80 degrees and I look at 407C, which gives me a liquid pressure, which, what's my liquid pressure? What does that relate to? Liquid pressure, that's got to be bubble point. Okay, and my vapor? That's two. So if I come down here to 80 degrees, I got 166 and 140. Oh, that's so 166 for my liquid pressure. 140 for my vapor pressure. So I might be using this one right here for measuring my super heat and this one for doing my set point. Gotta keep that in mind, right? Gotta keep that in there. I don't remember that. 
and I need to start, right? Yeah. Um, I know you're great. I know you're wonderful. Got great memory. But can you remember every one of these? No, I'm not going to remember all of these numbers um, here. So yeah. call me one of the app, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you can go to my website, monkey.com, click on tech services, all kinds of fun apps and stuff on there. Yeah. Just go to the apps page, okay? Uh oh, they changed something here. Oh, okay. It looks like we're so, pressures now. Yeah, now I have a 407 C chart where I look pressures and I have multiple temperatures. So at 80 degrees, I have a liquid line temperature of 40, and 26, and I have 51.8 for the vapor. And again, the vapor is. Uh, Two point. point. I'm getting confused. Yeah, a little bit. Almost yeah. lost it there. And liquid is my bubble point. Okay. So I just have to keep this in mind is that you know when I've got bubbles, I gotta have liquid that bubbles, right? Okay. And do I'm I'm turning from a vapor to a liquid or vice versa. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm leaving the liquid thing the whole behind and I'm super eating. Yeah. So I'm gonna use this vapor for my super eating and the uh, liquid. Uh, temperature for my sub cooling temperature. Okay. So if I do this in real application, you know, thank you, Mr. This is and all the Sporland fans and all the Sporland valve company people for this wonderful presentation. So I follow the same process I'm gonna do my super right? right? I put my pressure gauges on. Okay. Okay. I go to my PT chart and now I'm gonna find my my dew point, because to obtain super heat, we need the dew point. To obtain sub cooling, I need the bubble point. Right. So I've got to have a chart, right? Yeah. So I go to my chart and find my dew point, which is also going to be my vapor, you know, yeah. temperature. Plug that baby in, right. physically measure the temperature, okay. and subtract the two, and that gives you my super heat. So okay. super heats and sub coolings are just the difference between the pressures and the actual line temperature. Absolutely. And I take the pressure converted to the temperature, and I need to know that I'm using my dew point. Now, when I'm doing sub cooling, a little bit different, this opposite day, right? Yeah. Go to SpongeBob. Okay. okay. Okay, so I find the bubble point temperature from the high pressure gauge. So I get the pressure on the gauge. I go to my pressure temperature chart or my app, which we highly recommend because yeah. it makes it easy because they're always changing the stuff, right? Of course. I subtract the liquid line temperature, now you have the sub -point. The example was for 407C, if I was at 200 PSIG, and this, this is just an example, at 74.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and I measure the liquid line temperature 70, I have 4.8. Sounds simple enough, right? Now, what the heck is all this? Um, this is our same cycle. So if I look at one, I'm going through my metering device, I got a little bit of sub coin there, or I've gone over into that bubble point. Okay, I've gone over the bubble point into sub coin. Go through the expansion device. I got my glide here, yeah. where the refrigerants have separated. Again, this is just an example. As it's done gliding its way through, yeah. okay, it reaches my line again, which we used to call the saturation line. Right. Okay, now we're calling it the dew point line. Now, once I go over this dew point line, I'm super heated. Yeah. Going through the compressor, come back through here, another dew line there, turn back into a liquid mixture of liquid and gas, that's so physically separating, yeah. and we're back together again. Okay? So, this is my consent. So, when I think about this logically, I just remember that when I'm calculating my super heat, I gotta find the dew point. Right. Okay? Which is also the vapor point. Okay? And when I want to do my sub cooling, I have to know the bubble point, which is also the liquid point. And we also learned that manufacturers will switch things around on us, right? Right. They'll have us give us one pressure for multiple temperatures or one temperature for multiple pressure. Either way. And yeah. as long as we know where we're going, we're good. Liquid. Right? So that's bubble and dew point. My name is Tim. My name is Mohammed. And we'll see you next time. Tim in, Tim out.